Welcome to Force Perspective, the review show that's posted at random intervals, so it seems like I have better things to do. I don't, I'm just really, really lazy. Today we'll be taking a look at The Blue Flamingo, a game where you don't play as a flamingo or anything blue. I... yeah, I don't... I don't get it either. Get that score! No, seriously, that's your objective as a player and your character's objective. It's... it's pretty meta. So anyways, the game! The Blue Flamingo is a top-down score attack shoot 'em up with the main draw being the aesthetic. The game's graphics all come from handcrafted models, and that includes the backgrounds, and even the effects come from filming fireworks. The only thing I can think of to compare it to is Platypus, you know, the schmop that used claymation. Wait a minute. Two shoot 'em ups. One using claymation and one handcrafted models, it's a fairly similar process. Both with ridiculous animals as their namesakes. No, it's not possible. I, no, I can't make an Illuminati joke. I'm better than that. It's not possible. Hey, you get out of here. Anyways, yes, it looks nice and it's certainly a refreshing change from the standard pixelated style that a lot of indie games go for. It reminds me of old stop motion movies and it's kind of nostalgic looking. And I just realized how stupid that sounds, having just complained about the 8-bit style other game devs use. Huh. Well, anywho, with all that about the aesthetic said and done, I have to say, I can't help but feel like that's where all the time went. Now, I'm not saying that the game is bad, it's just, well, let's start talking about things and go from there. I mean, that's kind of the point of a review, to give you the information so you can come to a conclusion of your own. So first, since it's still related to the visuals, there's only two backgrounds that they repeat through. Which, I understand why, it would take an unreasonable amount of time to make even one more. But still, it makes the already repetitive gameplay feel even more repetitive. Like I said, it's good to look at the first couple times. And while on the subject, things sometimes blend into the background. It doesn't happen a lot, but in this section, it can be hard to distinguish enemies from the background, and this could have been fixed with a little lighting change. But you get used to it after about the fifth time through. No, what? It's just a callback! Okay, now when it comes to the core gameplay, there's not a lot I can actually say that isn't already stated by the genre itself. It's pretty bog standard. Avoid and shoot enemies, rinse and repeat until you die. I will mention a few things though. First, your shots don't come from the center of your ship. You have two alternating guns, one on the center left and the other, unsurprisingly, on the center right. And then you have periodic rockets on the far left and right. It feels a little off at first, but you get used to it pretty quickly. And the other thing I'll mention is the enemy variety. It's decent, they add a new enemy every level, but I gotta say, they feel like they're added really slowly. And that's something I'll say about the game in general, it feels a little slow. Not in a big way, but things could have been paced just a little faster. Oh, also, you have a recharging bomb that kills everything. I honestly kind of forgot about it. Okay, now it's time to talk about scoring. The game has an interesting system where you can use your points to upgrade your guns or your bomb. But if you keep the points, you gain interest, which is an interesting idea, and I feel like it would have worked really well if you could do more than just upgrade your gun's fire rate or your bomb's recharge time. Even if you'd be able to repair your ship for a large amount of points, it would add a lot to the system. But as it is, I like the idea, but the implementation, not the best. With all that said, I will say the biggest issue, besides the length, which isn't that big of an issue given the score focus, is out of the dev's control, and that's the player base. The game is based around score competition, but there's so few people playing it that I got the third highest score in the world. Seriously, me! I did this! This guy! Well, sort of that guy, but yeah, when I reach the top percentile, there's something wrong. Now let's review the review. Okay, if you could, if you could stop. The Blue Flamingo is a short top-down score attack shmup with a handmade model aesthetic, and while the game looks nice and refreshing, the gameplay itself isn't anything too special. Combine that with a small player base and a game dependent on competition, and you have a game that, unless you're a score junkie itching for a fix or someone content with just a short art show, might not be what you're looking for. But it's got controller support, so that's nice.
Thanks for watching. Click over here to watch the last review I made. If you're worried about it no longer being relevant, <laughs> don't worry. It wasn't relevant when I released it. Ah, oh, God, I'm so lazy. You know, whatever, no discrimination. Anyway, some bad stuff happened. Well, a lot of bad stuff happened. So naturally, you delve into a dangerous dungeon. Kill everything that moves, collect some runes, and then die to a clown. Yeah, I...